Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I came here to worship Him. Amen. Show Him our appreciation today. Amen. I'm going to open this up today, read a few scriptures, and give a word of prayer. I'd like to read out of Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits, Amen. who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who yes. healeth all thy diseases, yes. who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. How many of you remember that it's beneficial living for God today? Amen. It's beneficial being children of his yes. kingdom. Because he takes good care of his children. Yes. Yes. There's so many benefits. They, they can't all be listed. For one, salvation. Amen. He right. forgiveth all our iniquities. He heals all our diseases. Yes. He takes care of us. He feeds us good things. He satisfies our mouth. He gives us rest for our soul. He yes. takes care of our yes. soul, spirit, mind, and body. Yes. And it's just so good living for him. I don't know about you, but I'm going to show him my appreciation. Yes. Yes. I want to be thankful unto Him. I want to sing praises to Him for all the wonderful things He's done for us. You should join with us this morning. Lord, we thank You today. We come here today to worship You, Lord. You're worthy of the praise this morning, God. We thank You for Your mercy. We thank You for Your goodness, Lord. We thank You for the good things that You've given us. Because we know that every good in our big gift comes from You, Lord. And we can say thank You, Jesus. Thank you for the good thing. Thank you for your spirit, Lord. Thank you for our families, Lord. Thank you for our jobs, Lord. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the freedom and the liberty to come together today in your name and worship you to give honor where honor is due today, Lord. We thank you for it, Lord. And we came here today to praise you, Lord. And we ask for your spirit to move upon this service. We ask for the anointing to flow through the ministry today, God. And touch every part and every mind that's gathered here this morning. And let us leave here different in the way we came in Jesus' name.
Lord, the King, the glory and His name. 
We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We need to pray for Sister uh, Ruby Krennic, Sister Mary Bibbins, and Sister Jean Daniels, these elders. We also need to lift up Sister Peggy Ramone. Um, her daughter was found deceased yesterday in, in her apartment. And uh, so that is, that is a huge shock to all of them. Yes. And uh, we need to lift up the yes. Lord, lift them up to the Lord yes. Amen. Uh, today. Ask the Lord to comfort them and give them peace yeah. uh, during this tragic time. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I, I know there's a lot of other needs this morning, but if you will just lift them up to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Call Amen. their names out this morning to the Lord. Yeah. The Lord will hear you. The yeah. Lord will Amen. respond. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come before you, Lord. We know that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask for things. Lord Jesus, we pray for Sister Ruby Krennic, God, Mary Bevins, Jean Daniels, and Sister Peggy Ramon. God, these elders today, Lord, we ask God for you to touch them. And Lord, move upon them, Lord. God, we pray for the Ramon family. God, as they are suffering this morning, as they are dealing, God, with this tragic loss of life, Lord, we ask, God, for you to move and comfort them. Give them peace, God, in the midst of the storm. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray, God, for Anthony Denoso. God, we pray for Michael Jeffrey, Lord. God, we pray for Ram and Nick Hernandez, God. Lord, we pray, God, for Bethany and Alicia and Mary, Lord, and Adam and Amanda, Lord Jesus. God, we pray for the demon family today, Lord. God Almighty, all these needs and many more. God, we ask God for you to move and work in these lives. God, every situation, every heart, God. God, Almighty, let your spirit and power move and work this morning in Jesus' name. And Lord God, we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Lord, we praise you today. Lord, we praise you today. Lord, you're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy of the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. We serve a prayer answering God. There are many testimonies in this place today that can testify and say we serve a prayer answering God. Amen. He responds to us. He loves us. He cares about our cares. He cares about the things that we're dealing with. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we worship.
that his kingdom will come. Amen. Praise God. You want to be part of the kingdom of God? Amen. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. You want some peace in your life? You want some joy in your life? Amen. That's what the Lord wants to give you today. Praise God. You can be seated this morning. We're going to ask our ushers to come. And would like to say that we're so very honored to have Sister Seely and her daughter, Sister Jessica, in service with us today. Amen. 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 Good to see Brother David and his wife. Yeah. So glad that, that you're doing better. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for thank this. You. Day. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to serve you and to worship you and give. And God, we ask for you to bless this tithe and this offering as it is given unto you. Let it go to the furtherance of your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Give us unto the Lord today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I appreciate Brother D. Amen. This is his first time Amen. receiving the offering. Yeah. Amen. Excited about doing something for the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, Sister Emily has a few announcements. Praise the Lord, everyone. All right. Um, just to bring to your remembrance, our Sunday school department is doing a fundraiser for their Christmas for Christ um, offering. Um, so if they come to you asking if you would like a chocolate bar or an airhead. Um, that's what they are raising the money for. Um, and then also, uh, we will be taking up the actual offering for Christmas for Christ on uh, December 24th. Uh, so it supports North American Missions, so don't forget about that. And then this evening, ladies, our, our ladies' Christmas um, evening gathering, whatever you would like to call it, um, has uh, arrived. It will be this evening at Sister Danielle's apartment at 6 p.m. Um, don't forget to bring um, your gift to do the gift exchange and whatever sweet and salty food item you chose. Um, it's going to be a great time. I'm looking forward to it tonight. And then this Saturday, the 16th, is our hyphen um, Christmas party, Christmas dinner at 6 p.m. At Chili's, and we will be doing a white elephant gift exchange for that as well. And then Sunday, December 17th, so this next Sunday is our Christmas service. Um, and our Sunday school department is going to be having a little Christmas party in their class um, that morning, but you don't want to miss it. We, um, we've got several special things that are going to be happening. Our youth, I believe, are going to be doing a little skit, and our Sunday school kiddos have a song. and. Um, it's going to be really good, so you don't want to miss that. Um, we'll have Sunday school as usual, 10 a.m., and then um, our Christmas service will start at 11 a.m. next Sunday. December uh, the 24th, which is a Sunday, that is our Christmas Eve service. We won't have Sunday school that morning, um, so we'll start at 11. We do have a guest uh, minister. And then um, Sunday, December 31st, is um, our New Year's Eve morning service. That is a fifth Sunday, so again, no Sunday school will start at 11, and that will be our soup and stew Sunday. So be thinking of your favorite soup or stew that you would like to bring. Amen. Amen. We've got a lot of things happening. Amen. And if, and if you haven't gotten plugged in, then get plugged in. And if you're a lady and you, you want to, and you didn't know about the, the ladies thing this evening, get with Sister Emily after church and she'll get you the info and uh, we'd like for all the ladies that can attend to attend. They're going to have a great time. Uh, I know my my wife, she, she's got all kinds of things cooked up for the ladies. So they're going to have fun. Amen. Praise God. What a great God we serve. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn with me to Numbers chapter 3. Numbers chapter number 3. 
Roman 3, verses 30 33. Numbers chapter 3, verses 30 through 33. Numbers chapter 3, verses 30 through 33. Say, man, if you got it, oh, man, if you want. It says, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature and there we saw giants the sons of Anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so were we in their sight I want to preach this morning about two different perspectives Two different perspectives. They saw the same thing, but they had two different perspectives. Joshua and Caleb saw the giants, but they said that the Lord promises to us, and we are well able to possess what the Lord has promised to us. And then the other perspective was the other ten spots that said the giants are too big. The, the adversity facing us is too great. We won't be able to possess what God has promised unto us. I want to preach to you this morning from this thought possessing the promises of God. Amen. Possessing the promises of God. Dear Lord, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. God, to be in your presence, Lord. God, I ask for you to help me to say something today that will encourage and help us to restore our faith and help us, Lord, to possess, God, the things that you have promised unto us. Oh, God, I ask God for you to move and work in every heart, every life. God, help us, Lord, today. In Jesus' name, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name. You can be seated this morning. In Genesis chapter number 15, verses 13 and 14, God makes promises unto Abraham. He tells Abraham that his seed shall be a stranger in a land and will be afflicted for 400 years and then God would judge that nation and they shall come out with a great substance. God gave Moses a word a promise to bring the children of Israel and this promise comes to them after 400 years of slavery to the Egyptians. The promises in, the, in Exodus chapter 3 in verse 17, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt and unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And Deuteronomy 6 and 10, he tells them, wait a minute, I know I told you that it was a land flowing with milk and honey, but I left something out, and he and he says uh, he, he says that I'm going to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, 
and houses full of good things which thou fillest not, and wells digged which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Amen. You, in other words, you won't have to dig any, and there are vineyards and olive trees that are already planted that you're not going to have to plant. But there is one small detail to it, that there's giants over there. It's a goodly, it's a goodly land, goodly cities. There's, there's all these blessings, all these wonderful things that you didn't have to work for that God has promised to them. And but, but there is a little hiccup. There's giants in the land. You're not going to be able to get it without a fight. You are going to have to possess. You're going to have to take action yeah. to possess what God has promised unto you. Yeah. Yeah. Now we go to our text. Moses sends 12 spies in to spy out the land. And in Numbers chapter 13, you read the book of Numbers 13. And it talks about how Moses sent 12 spies. It tells who they are as well. And, uh, and what tribes they came from. And, and one spy from every tribe uh, out of all the 12 tribes of, of Israel. And to bring back some fruit of the land. And they go into the land for 40 days. And they spy out the land. And they bring back figs and pomegranates and grapes. Uh, and and uh, the, the scripture says in Numbers 13 that the grapes were so big that it took two, two men to carry them. That's some big grapes. So we're not talking about some little bitty grapes you buy in a bag at H-E-B. I mean, we're talking about two grown men having to tie it up on a stick and having to carry them. It, to, the, the, that is some big grapes. Uh -huh. I mean, the Bible doesn't say who these two men were, but, but uh, you know, I almost think that they were Joshua and Caleb because they were the only two who agreed upon the promises of God. Amen. And who believed that they could possess their inheritance? Right. Amen. Uh, yeah, all 12 spies announced that truly this was a land flowing with milk and honey. Yeah. <coughs> Amen. The, the, they all agreed that, that it was what the Lord had promised them. Right. It was everything that God had promised. Right. Uh, and, and here's some fruit of it. Yeah. 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 Grapes the size of men. And, but ten spies went on to say, nevertheless, and you know, in our, in our modern language, uh, uh, that, that would be a but. <laughs> yeah. It would say, yeah. it is indeed a land flowing with milk and honey, but. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as soon as I see that but in there, or that nevertheless, I, I know trouble is brewing. Yeah. That one little word has robbed so many people out of their faith. I believe that, right? They've stolen their health, robbed them of their dreams, kept them from their miracle, and slammed the door shut yeah. to the promises of God. I know God can heal me, but yeah. right. I know God can deliver me, but yeah. this is too much. Yeah. I know God can save, but I, I, I know God can open the door, but I, I know God can bring water out of a rock, uh, but can he give us a table uh, and put meat on it here in this wilderness? Uh, yeah. I know God can, but yeah. how many times have we stood on the border of our promised land? Yeah. We stood at the edge of our promises, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, and we fell take possession right. of the things that God has promised us uh, right. because of that word but. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, this is indeed a land flowing with milk and honey, but yeah. there are giants mm -hmm. in the land. Yeah. We are in our own eyes yeah. as grasshoppers. Right. Yeah. And I don't know if they talk to a giant. I doubt because they were afraid. Yeah. So they assumed yeah. that that is the way that the giants saw them. Yeah. 
They said, and, and so are we in their eyes. <laughs> you know, I, I doubt they had a round table discussion with a bunch of giants. Yeah. You know, they, they were in and out. They were trying to hide. And they were looking through their little glass marbles, you know. <laughs> they didn't really have binoculars back then. But, you know, just looking through, trying to see from a distance. Yeah. Man, these people look big. Yeah. Man, these people, I, I don't know what... What my iPad is doing. No, I don't want to. Okay. I don't know. Electronics trying to talk to you. I don't want to talk to it. Amen. But but looking from a distance, not wanting to get close. They're, they're, they're saying we're so small, we're like a grasshopper in our own eyes. That, that's how we view the obstacle that is in front of us. That is how we view the, the, the situation, the adversity that we are seeing. And in order for us to obtain the promises of God, we've got to go through the giants. Yeah. 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 We've got to overcome these obstacles in yeah. our lives. Yeah. We've got to go on in faith and possess the promises yeah. of God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, many times people think of the promised land. They, they, they view it as, it, as it talking about heaven. Uh, I don't believe that that is a correct uh, correlation there because in heaven there are no giants. Right, right. In heaven there, there, there is nothing that's evil, yeah. nothing that does wickedness, nothing. Uh, you're not going to be fighting in heaven. Right? right? But but the, the promised land is a type of the kingdom of God. Right. Amen. Whenever you come into the kingdom of God, there are blessings. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. Yeah. God is wanting to pour his blessings out on your life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But many times people come uh, with the false impression that when they come into the church uh, yeah. and they begin this walk with the Lord, uh, that it's all going to be easy. Uh, it's easy straight. I'm never going to face any giants. Uh, I'm never going to face problems. I'm never going to face sickness. Uh, I'm never going to face uh, uh, you know, turmoil in my life. Uh, and then they get into it and they realize uh, that, hey, there are still problems here. There, you know, I, I, I still get sick. I, you know, there's problems. There's times uh, in my life where there might be some chaos in my life. Uh, Amen. But the difference is, uh, is that when you get your perspective uh, off of your problem uh, and get your perspective uh, off of the giants uh, and, and get them on the grapes, uh, get them on the blessings of God, uh, get them on the good things that God is doing in your life, uh, that yay, though I walk uh, through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, I will fear no evil. Uh, why? Because here's some grapes. Uh, because thou art with me. Oh, I'm not going to fear uh, because God is walking right next to me. Uh, he's holding my hand. Uh, he's carrying me through. Uh, and I know that nothing uh, shall pluck me out of the Father's hand. Amen. 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 But many people have fallen short of the promises of God in their life. Yep. Not because God has failed to give them to them, That's right. but because they have failed to possess the promises of yep. God. Right. Yep. There was an entire generation, yep. anybody tw uh, 21 years and older, yep. that died in the wilderness yep. just short of the promise. Yep. Because they could not believe. Uh, they couldn't get their eyes off the giants. Uh, they couldn't believe God for the promises. Uh, they couldn't believe God for the blessings in their life. Uh, amen. And all they, they focus and they zero in on the, pro on the problems. Yeah, on the problems. That's right. Amen. And they yeah. died in the wilderness. Yeah, sure. That's good for The Lord said only those that are 20 years and younger. Yeah. They're going to be the generation that's going to go in and possess the land. Right, amen. Joshua and Caleb were the only ones uh, yeah. that were above 40 that went in to possess the land. Yeah. Caleb was 80 years old uh, when they went over. Uh, yeah. And Caleb said, you know what? Uh, I'm ready to give me my mountain. Uh, I might be 80 years old, but I'm just as strong as I was when I was a little, uh, when I was a lad. Uh, I'm, I was just, I'm just as strong uh, as when I went in, uh, when 
I was younger. Uh, amen. God, God has promised me some things. Uh, and I'm ready to possess it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Hallelujah. It's not just enough to receive promises from God. Yeah. But you have got to possess the promises of God. Yeah. Amen. You know, we, we like the thought that uh, we like the thought of God just giving it out. Yeah, yeah. You know, like there's a blessing line. Yeah. There's a promises line and he's just going to give it out. There's not going to be any problems in your life from henceforth. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> you know what? We live in a world of sin. Yeah. We live in a world of the fallen nature. Yeah. We live in a world where there is a principality of the air, uh, which is the devil. We, yeah. we, we have an adversary. Uh, yeah. There are giants. Yeah. Uh, there are problems. There are trials uh, that will come and stand up in our lives uh, and try to roar at us yeah. Uh, yeah. and try to keep us uh, and try to make us faint of heart uh, to where we do not possess. Uh, yeah. Amen. That God says, I am here. God says I am delivered. God says I shall live and not die. God says it. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to have faith in it. I'm going to know that God fulfills his promises. Amen. I believe that. Amen. Amen. There are giants in the land. The ten spies had the same problem. They had giants in their eyes. You know, at some point in your life, as a believer, you've got to make up your mind yep. whether or not you're going to focus on the giants yep. or the grapes. Yep. Yep. That's right. Whether or not you're going to focus on the molehill, and when you zoom into that, it looks like a mountain, but it's really just a molehill. Yeah. The giants look really big. Amen. But we, we read about <coughs> what someone that believed in God can do to a giant. Yeah, man. Amen. A lad. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yeah. A young man. He wasn't a warrior. He was a shepherd. Yeah. Amen. But he believed in the Lord. He had faith in the Lord. It doesn't take a great and mighty person uh, to overcome the giants in your life. Uh, it takes faith in God. Uh, it takes you believing in God. Uh, Amen. That God is still able to do exceedingly, uh, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Uh, Amen. It takes having faith uh, in the promises of God in your life. Amen. Having, allowing the blessings of the Lord. Are you focusing on the promises uh, or are you focusing on the giants? You see, the grapes represents the promises, the blessings, the provisions of God. Yeah. The giants represent the enemies, the adversaries to the promises yeah. and the provisions of God. They want to keep you out. They want to keep you from possessing right. those promises. Yeah. Amen. Giants represent trials and adversity. Yeah. Amen. They are employed by the devil to resist you, to frustrate you, uh, and to steal the promises of God from your life. Uh, amen. To try to keep you from ever seeing the fulfillment of those promises. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. There's all kinds of giants that we deal with today. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We deal with fear. Yeah. We deal with insecurity. We deal with, with sickness, with debt, with depression, worry, anxiety, stress. Family problems. Yeah. Amen. The list goes on and on and on yeah. of giants that can stand up in your life. Yeah. Amen. That would try to discourage you yeah. and try to keep you from pursuing after right. God oh. and pursuing after the things of God yeah. and pursuing after the promises of God. Right. Amen. But I've come to tell you this morning in the Holy yeah. Ghost uh, yeah. that you've got one perspective or another. Yeah. Amen. You're either going to look at your problem oh. and say, oh, how great great is my problem. Uh, or you're going to look at your God, uh, the problem solver, and say, oh, how great is my God. Uh, amen. I might be going through a difficult situation. Uh, I might have errors. Uh, I might be attacked on all sides. Uh, but I know that God is able to keep me. Uh, I know that I serve a God, uh, and I'm in His hands. Uh, and so I'm not going to look uh, at the problems, uh, but I'm going to look at the problem solver. Amen. Hallelujah. Right, Your perspective matters. 
Amen. There's power in your perspective. Yeah. Power, thank you, brother. Power in the way that you see things. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. I believe it. Amen. Amen. The way that ten spies saw something kept an entire generation out of the promise. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And Joshua and Caleb's perspective allowed them to enter and possess the promises. Sure did. Yeah. Yeah. The only two from their generation that went in and possessed the promises of right. God. Amen. Yeah. You know, sometimes when we look at the the physical, we look at the problems that are facing us. They're very real. I'm not denying that, that you face problems in your life. Right, right, right. Yeah. They are very real. Yeah. Amen. But what I'm talking about today is and some of these problems you can't do anything about mm, yeah. except pray about it. Yeah, right. You don't have the answer to your problem. Right. All you can do is pray. All you can do is turn and give it to the Lord. Yeah. All you can do is turn it over to the Lord. But you do have power in your perspective. Yeah, right. yeah. You do have control of your perspective. Yeah. How am I going to view this? How am I going to look at this? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've I, I, I've been getting uh, you know I, I've been getting given a sentence by the doctors. Uh, you know, and they they said this is my problem. This is what I got. This is my issue. And, and, and how are you going to look at it? Are you going to look at it as woe is me? Uh, look, look how bad I've got it. Are you going to look at You know, this is an opportunity that God has given me in some way uh, to work it out. And God's still got his hand on me. Uh, and God's going to work out this situation. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Me and Pastor, we were talking the other day. Amen. And, and <clears throat> he, he told me, he said, man, this year has really been a year. You know, he had a heart attack at the beginning of the year, and then he had this issue uh, a week ago. Amen. And, you know, and, 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 man, this has really been a year. But he said, you know, I have found that in this time, in these times of affliction that I was dealing with, uh, that, the, that these were opportunities that God placed me uh, in, the, in the area of people that I could witness to uh, yeah. and I could talk to them about the Lord. Uh, people that I would have never gotten the opportunity to talk to otherwise. Uh, amen. He, he, he spoke to a, a Buddhist man uh, and, be, and began to relay his conviction to him. Uh, amen. And guess what? The Buddhist man understood uh, what my dad was trying to tell him. Uh, amen. He got to witness to him about the importance of, of spending time with the Lord uh, and having a relationship with the Lord uh, and how much it means to Him. Uh, yeah, yeah. Amen. Sow and seed. <coughs> Sow and seed. Right. Seed that seed that would not have been sowed otherwise. Right. Yeah. Amen. You know, you know what that perspective is? It's the same perspective that Joseph had. When his brothers come to him, scared for their lives because they did something wrong to him. Yeah. And Joseph said, what you meant for evil, yeah. God turned it around for good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, giant, you might have tried to come and destroy me. Yeah. You might have tried to knock me down. You might have tried to knock me back a couple steps. You might have tried to destroy my life. But, but when you came at me meaning for evil to destroy me, God is going to turn it around uh, and he's going to use it for He's going to use it for his good. Uh, amen. He's going to use it. Uh, amen. Your negative circumstances and your trials uh, and your troubles. Uh, amen. God can turn it around. Uh, amen. And give you a testimony uh, and, and use it for your good. See, if you're motivated, energized, and driven by the grapes, focusing on the promises of God, yeah. then the giants won't be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Again, we can talk about David. Mm, yeah. You know, David, and I don't, I don't know if he was thinking about this when he came at Goliath, but Goliath was a seasoned warrior. He was. He was an accomplished warrior. Yeah. He, he had notoriety. Yeah. 
He was known for his, his battle skills. And here, David is just a shepherd boy. No armor. All he had was a sling and some stones. And David, in full of faith, said, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a, uh, a shield and a spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Amen. But could it be that David remembered months prior, uh, or a little bit before uh, that happened, when an old prophet came to him uh, and poured oil on his head uh, and said, "David, you're going to become king. Uh, you're you're next. Uh, David, God has anointed you king. Uh, God has anointed you king." And so as he is facing Goliath. Uh, with no weaponry other than a sling, uh, with no armor, uh, and you know it, and having complete confidence uh, that God would fulfill his promise, uh, and that God was with him, uh, and that God would do whatever God needed to do uh, to bring down the giant in his life. Uh, amen. Uh, I've come to preach to you today uh, and encourage you uh, that I don't know what you're dealing with in your life, uh, but if you have faith in God, uh, and have faith in the promises of God, and keep your focus on the Lord. Amen. I will look up into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I'm not going to focus on my giants. I'm not going to focus on my problems. But I'm going to focus on Jesus. God is still in control despite what I face. Despite my problems, yeah. despite my issues, yeah. despite the things that I'm facing, despite the things yeah, sir. that are standing in between me and my promise, yeah. Yeah. God is still in control. Still yeah. Goliath stood between David and the kingship. Yeah. Yeah. The kingship was the promise of God on his life. Said you're going to be king. God is anointing you to be king. Yeah. Yeah. And between David being a shepherd boy and David becoming king, yeah. stood Goliath. That's right. yeah. Amen. Right. But David had faith in God. Amen. He said, "I'm not coming in my own power. Yeah. I'm not coming in my own might. Yeah. I'm not a warrior." But I do serve the Lord God of hosts. Yeah. And I'm coming to you in his name. I'm coming yeah. to you with his power. I'm coming against you with his authority. Yeah. Not my own, but his. Amen. I'm going to muster up. I'm going to have faith in the, in the God of my salvation. Come on. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Trust me. That's true. See, some people have giants in their eyes. All they can see is giants. Yeah. All they can talk about are the giants. Yeah. All they see is the bad economy. Yeah. The poor health. Yeah. All they can see is the negative things happening in their lives. Mm, yeah. My pray God gave me this to try to encourage you Amen. to lift your eyes up. Yeah. Amen. Don't focus on the negative in your life. Focus on the one, on the problem solver. Don't focus on the problems, but focus on the problem solver. Focus on the one that's still in control, regardless of what we face, regardless of what we come, what comes against us. Amen. There are many that are held prisoner by a giant mentality. They are slaves in a giant prison. These. They stand at the edge of their promises and they can't believe God, that God would fulfill his promise in their life. If that's been you up to now, today, make that adjustment to your vision. Make that adjustment to your perspective. And say, I'm not going to focus. I, I know, I'm not denying my issues. I'm not denying that I have issues and I have problems and I struggle with things. I'm not denying that. But I'm just not going to focus on that. I'm not putting my perspective in that. 
I'm not putting all my efforts in that, but I'm going to put my efforts in magnifying Him. Yeah. I'm going to put my efforts in yeah. looking unto Jesus, yeah. the author and the finisher of my faith. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to look unto Jesus, uh, the one who began this thing in me, uh, and He's going to be the one that's going to end it. Uh, amen. He's the beginning and the end, the yeah. author and the finisher. Yeah. Amen. Hey, he doesn't stop in the middle. The devil cannot take me out. Uh, the devil cannot destroy me. God is, God is in control of my destiny. God is in control of my life. Uh, amen. The devil, he might can scare me. Uh, he might can put fear in my life uh, and put some, try to put some instability in my life. Uh, but I'm going to recognize those giants uh, and I'm not going to allow them to take control of me. Uh, but I'm going to have dominion over them uh, yeah. by the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost. We need to possess the promises of God. Yep. Amen. Hang on to yes, sir. Look at him. You see, when you fill your eyes with the promises of God, the problems in your life, which are very real. Again, I'm not, I'm not discounting your problems. I'm not discounting that you're facing storms and trials. But when you fill your eyes with the promises of God, and you, you put your eyes on the Lord. Then the problems in your life become very small. When Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he walked on the very water that was rocking his boat. As long as he kept his eyes on Jesus. But when he got his eyes off of Jesus and on the storm that was rocking his boat, he begins to sink. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Yes, amen. Keep your perspective on the Lord. That's right, amen. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. See, today is the day for possessing your promises. Mm -hmm. Amen. You need to make up your mind. I'm not going to have my eyes on God. <coughs> yeah. I'm not denying that they're there, but I'm just having faith in the God that's going to give me victory over all those things. Over all those issues, all, over all those problems Damn. in my life. Damn. Amen. I'm, I'm going to just keep my eyes on him, <laughs> and he's going to give me victory over Amen. Yeah. I believe it. Amen. You know, you pass things down to your children. Mm -hmm. There's a whole generation coming behind you. Yeah. What heritage are you going to pass down to your children or your grandchildren? Are, are they going to hear about the faithfulness of God, or will you sow negativity into their lives? Yeah. Amen. Well, we so doubt into the lives. Mm, yeah. Amen. Focus on the blessings of God. Focus on the faithfulness of God, on yeah. the promises of God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We want a generation to come behind us that's got more faith than what we have. Amen. Amen. We want a generation to rise up that says, you know what? We can possess this land, yeah. and we can possess that land, and every single thing that God has promised us, we can see come to pass in our lives. Amen. Amen. The Lord wants to change your perspective today. The Syrian army comes against Elisha. And I say Elisha, not the children of Israel. The king of Syria brings his entire army and surrounds Elisha because it was told him that Elisha is the one that is telling the king of Israel all the secrets that you say in your secret chamber. And so the king of Syria brings the, his entire army against Elisha. And Elisha's servant walks out of the, the hut, walks out of the house, looks, and he sees the entire host of the Syrians surrounding them. Now, that was a very real problem. I'm not denying that the Syrians existed. They were there. And they were very visible. And the servant's heart began to melt with fear. And he runs back in and he says, Alas, my master, what are we going to do? Maybe, maybe we can go 
sneak out the back and hide in the caves. Israel was known for hiding in caves when the enemy came against them. Oh, I, I know a cave. We go hide. What are we going to do? And Elisha, the scripture doesn't say that Elisha went out and looked. Elisha tells the servant, he says, Great, there's more that be with us than they that be against us. Where? All I see is the problems. All I see is the Syrians. They are there. This is a very real problem. Where is the help that is greater? And Elisha prays and says, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Now, I would have thought that the servant was seeing just fine. You know, he had, he had those corrective lenses and he could see the enemies. Yeah. He could see the Syrians. There was no disguise of the fact that there was enemies surrounding them. Right. You see, that, that's not the eyes that the prophet was wanting to open. And the Lord opened his eyes. And the scripture says that the mountains <coughs> surrounding the enemy <coughs> was filled with flaming chariots of fire. There was an angelic host that not only surrounded the prophet, but surrounded his problem. There was greater a greater number that was for them than they that were against them. If I can encourage you today to, to pray, Lord, open my eyes that I can see the unseen. Help me to be able to see your hand and you working in my life and you working in my situation. Help me to keep my eyes on you and not just focus on the one the physical and the visible and the tangible and everything that I can physically see. And help me, Lord, to know that you're working on my behalf. Greater is he that is in you than he that is against you. Yeah. And God promised you. He said, I am with you always. Even to the end of the earth. Even when you feel alone, you're never alone. Because God says, I'm with you. When you feel like that, that nobody else knows what you're going through. God says, I know what you're going through. Because I am with you. And I will be with you. Hallelujah. Can we stand today? Lord, change my perspective. Help me, Lord, not to just view the negative. And just view all the problems. And just view the issues coming against me. But God, help me to know that your hand is at work in my life. Help me not to just view the giants. Lord, help me to remember the grace, the blessings that you have promised me, the, the, the fulfillment of those blessings, the, the, the blessings of the Lord, the promises of God in my life. Let's, every head bow, let's just spend a few moments in prayer right now. I feel like that God wants to encourage somebody's faith. Amen. I, I, I felt like that from the onset of this service, that God is wanting to encourage somebody's faith. Amen. You're, you might have been focusing on everything that has been coming against you, and God is saying, lift up your eyes to the hills, because that's where I'm coming from. I'm not, I'm not coming from your problems. You've got to lift up your eyes. You've got to magnify the Lord. You've got to make him bigger. You've got to focus on the Lord today. Amen. And if you'll focus on the Lord today, he'll give you peace. He'll give you the peace that passes all understanding. He'll give you joy in your life. Despite what you're going through, he will help you. Let's pray for a few minutes. Lord Jesus. God, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be in your presence. God, I know that you're in control. 
Lord, I have complete faith and confidence in you. I know that, God, that there's nothing that is too big and too heavy for you to carry. Lord, there's nothing that's too big for you to deal with, nothing too hard for you. God, I've got trust in you. I, I, I believe that, Lord, you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God, I ask for you to renew and restore our faith today. Help us, Lord, to believe you. Help us to have faith in you. Help us, Lord, to trust in you. And lean not to our own understanding, but, Lord, help us to acknowledge you in all of our ways and know that you will direct our path. Lord Jesus, I thank you for being God. I thank you, Lord, that nothing is bigger than you. God, I pray for every person here today. I ask for you to bless your people and for you to anoint them and use them, God. Help them, give them victory in their lives. In Jesus' name. And we thank you for it today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for it today. Lord, we have faith in you. We know that you're able to do exceedingly. Abundantly above all. And Lord, we trust in you. God, move upon us today and help us. God, to seek out with you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. Thank you. In Jesus. In Jesus. I'm I'm not a singer. Uh, but uh, right before service, before this. This, an old song I hadn't heard it in years it came to me right when I was walking through the back door it says keep your eyes on Jesus don't ever look away keep your eyes on Jesus keep faith along the way clouds will often hide the sun and hinder your view but keep your eyes upon the light he will shine through <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes on the Lord today. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. God bless you.